Any questions or needs before we continue? All right. Now, for the rest of Physics 1500, and also a decent chunk of Physics 1510 if you take that class, we are going to be talking about energy, or at least considering the energy in situations, uh, because it's an important part of why things are moving and why things do what they do, or does it have, or does something have the energy in itself to actually accomplish a specific task? So it's worth, I think, to take a second to pause and define energy in terms of how we're going to be using it in physics. And the weird thing about energy is we still don't really know what it is. We know it exists because we see it do stuff, but we can't really observe it directly to study energy directly. Um, Any time in your life that you have thought that you can see energy, that is technically an incorrect statement. We cannot observe energy directly at all. For a lot of human history, people have probably thought that they might be able to. I'd say since humans have first been on the planet and opened their eyes, they've seen light from the sun, and they've also seen lightning. Lightning is probably the first thing people might think of when they think of trying to observe energy. And because I grew up in the 90s, I grew up with a lot of media that would probably say, where you know, there's a situation and a character might say, oh, I can see the energy coming off of that thing or that person, but technically, no, you can't. You are not seeing energy. You are seeing light, because that's the only thing that your eye can see. In the case of lightning specifically, what you're seeing is a photon given off by plasma that was created when electricity passed through air. At no point of that are you seeing a number of joules, you are seeing light that was created by matter that had energy. There's some scholarly debate as to whether or not light should count as a form of energy, but there's as much scholarly debate to say that it isn't itself energy, it's a traveling wave form that carries energy with it. So, all you see is light created by the object that has energy. You cannot look at a thing and categorically say that thing is made of energy because you can't see the energy itself. You can only see things that have energy. So the light is a, it's a particle in a way. So the particle would be more towards energy, right? Well, it, if light is a particle, which still up in the air, still very weird, uh, if light is a particle, you would then have to argue if it was a particle of energy or if it was some other particle that had energy. So, still some debate. Good point, though. Very good point. But, at least academically, there's no way to detect energy directly. You can only detect the byproducts of things that have energy. You can't even really feel energy with like your sense of touch either. You th there's a reason like, there's an argument to be made that you should be able to detect thermal energy by touch, but at least the way that I understand the, the temperature sensitive cells in your skin to work, you're not actually sensing like the amount of thermal energy inside of an object because if I touch, say, this marker versus you know, the wall of this building, they register as about the same temperature to my skin, but because the building has more mass, the building is going to have more energy stored in it, and I cannot detect that. The only thing you can detect using your own skin is whether or not thermal energy is entering you or leaving you. If you feel cold, that's thermal energy leaving through your skin. If you feel hot, that's thermal energy entering through your skin. And in neither case can you accurately predict how much energy that is, or how much energy is within the object that you're touching. 
we can only detect it via indirect means. And in all of those cases, the energy is always possessed by some object that is either just storing it or using it to do something. And I'm including emitting light as one of those things objects can do using energy. So, even academically, the best definition of energy that I am going to give you that we are going to use in this class is energy is something that matter can have, that matter can use to do stuff. That's literally an academic definition. That energy is weird. You can't detect it directly. You can only detect that it exists within objects that are using it to do things like move and emit light or sound. Energy can exist in lots of different forms and pretty much all objects can possess energy to varying degrees, uh, but was my, what was my next point? Oh. The only way you detect the energy itself is if the object is giving off some sign that it has it, or if the object visibly uses it to do something. The energy is either going to sit in stasis or be used as part of a task and then end up somewhere else. So, how this relates back to work is, uh, work is the act of using slash transferring slash transforming energy. So whenever energy is used or moved from place to place or changes state, that means that some amount of work was done in order for that change to take place. And uh, whatever amount of energy is transferred or transformed, that means that that, at the very least, that same amount of work had to be done at a minimum. If we want to transfer 500 joules worth of energy, we have to do at least 500 joules worth of work in getting that energy from point A to point B. Oftentimes, though, you have to do even more work than the energy that you transfer. Uh, for example, when you put gas in your car, the gasoline itself is really just a physical chemical battery because the engine goes into your engine, sorry, the gas goes into your engine, it combusts, it releases the energy that was stored inside of the gas, and you use that energy to physically go into your car and make it move forward. But say you, put, say you dump like 10 million joules worth of gasoline into your car, your car is not going to manage to get 10 million joules worth of kinetic movement energy out of that gas because of friction. So if you want 10 million joules worth of energy, you're gonna have to do more than 10 million joules worth of work. Entirely because friction exists and is acting as a non-conservative force to take energy away from your system. Now, you've definitely all heard uh, in some context the phrase energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can simply be transferred or transformed. This is, uh, I keep wanting to say Newton's second law, but no, that's the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah, so law, second law of thermodynamics, the law of conservation of energy. This law says that the amount of total energy that exists in some situation, in some system, must remain constant from start to finish. The energy can't be annihilated, new energy can't spontaneously come into being, the total from start to finish has to remain the same. And that is still true, despite what currently on screen might make it sound like. 
When I say that friction acts as a non-conservative force and does non-conservative work, that means that it takes energy out of a system. It takes energy that is in a visible, ready-to-use, mechanical form and then turns it into a useless, non-mechanical state. The energy exists, it's just not anywhere we can see or use it anymore. And to elaborate on mechanical energy, if you've ever seen a physical task being performed, uh, if something's being lifted or pushed or moved in any way, shape, or form, if something was moving, if it was actively in motion, all of the energy interactions and transfers you were physically observing in the physical movement of that physical material is mechanical energy. Um, I think the root word mechanos either means physical or motion. I forget which of the two. And that's the form of energy that we ideally want things to be in because we can use it to do stuff. Yes? So if we do it like some kind of mechanism, does that mean any work that we're doing is going to get burned to eat? It doesn't have to do anything with that? That is, well, most machines aren't designed to turn mechanical energy into heat. But as long as there are moving parts in the machine, some of the energy is going to become heat, whether you want it to or not. Okay. So very good point. As long as friction exists in a system, and it will as long as matter is touching other matter, even air, then friction is going to take whatever amount of work is being done, friction is going to take some of that energy that was in a usable mechanical state and turn it into a non-mechanical state like thermal energy. Thermal energy isn't useless if you're trying, in the sense that it can be used to keep us warm. I like not being freezing, but that's kind of all that thermal energy is good for, just warming things up. Thermal energy by itself can't be used to make a train move. It can't be used to fill up my stomach. It's not mechanical, it's not in a state that can be readily harnessed for anything else. And the fact that friction is constantly leaching energy away and turning it into thermal energy is a big problem for the entire universe because there's a concept within science that eventually friction will turn all energy into thermal energy and nothing will ever happen again assuming the rapture doesn't happen first. Pardon me. So, whenever you perform a physical task using mechanical energy, you are giving energy to some other object and it is ideally trying to perform some mechanical task with that energy. But friction is then going to take that energy away. And it does this because friction is a force, and as long as it's kinetic friction, that force is exerted as an object moves some distance, which ties us back to our work formula. Let's hypothetically go back to this situation and just add a tiny bit of friction into it. Let's just say that there was there was the whole time 10 newtons of friction opposing the motion of the box. This is a force, and it's in the same axis as the movement, so we can still use our formula. Work done by friction is force parallel times displacement. 10 newtons times 10 meters would give us a work done by friction of 100 joules. That was my original intention, but mechanical is a very good way of interpreting it. Thank you for that. I can't pretend that was my intention the whole time. Professor, are we subtracting forces together? Or what are we doing with the forces? So, when calculating the work done by a specific force, you ignore everything else in the axis. Okay. 
If you want to know the work done by friction, you take the force directly exerted by friction and multiply it by the final resulting displacement. I suppose that the interaction of the two forces might affect this answer mm -hmm. because if you were pushing the box and friction didn't exist, you'd be able to push it farther by doing the same amount of work as opposed to if friction existed, making it harder the whole time. But if these are the numbers, you just take the whole force and multiply it by the whole displacement. Now, why do I keep hurting myself? So the total amount of work that has been done so far is probably like 600 joules. Um, because we took the 500 and added with the 100. Person did 500 joules. Well, okay, here's where things get sticky. Friction is taking away. Friction's taking energy away. Mm -hmm. And we can mathematically represent this by the fact that friction points in the opposite direction as our applied force. It's in the same axis, but it would technically be negative. Which formally gives us a negative answer. So we, the person pushing, did 500 joules worth of work. But friction, opposing us, took 100 of those joules away. So it's, ac it's accurate to say that the box only got 400 joules worth of energy out of this interaction. And whenever you do a, for uh, a work calculation, and the force is negative, and the joules comes out to be negative, that means that the force involved, which is probably friction, was non-conserved. And as we continue moving through chapter five, we're gonna look at lots of different types of energy. Maybe not lots. We're gonna look at some different types of energy, some different processes that involve energy and work, and we'll examine some of them to determine if the work was conserved, what things that were present would take energy away, and nine times out of 10, if that happens, it's gonna be friction. Because friction is the eternal goblin in the side of all energy calculations. Any questions? All right, it's Friday, and that's the end, and I don't wanna hold you, so do please have a wonderful day. You can stick around if you have any questions about anything whatsoever, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it here so that people can head on towards, hopefully, their weekends and or a nice lunch. I'm hungry.